My name is Vahid Chitza, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, my name is Irene Valarezo, and I am currently residing in Hallandale Beach, Florida. Awesome. Let me push this volume up a little bit higher so I can hear you. So let's dive into entrepreneurship. I know that you operate in real estate, but I want to pivot a little bit more for the individuals that are thinking about that they want to become an entrepreneur or they want to quit their nine to five job and have some other avenue or sources of income. In order to be an entrepreneur and work for yourself, what would you say that are the two key elements that have helped you so far achieve the success that you've had? Thick skin and choosing at every step of the way. Choosing Elaborate on thick skin. I'm sorry? Elaborate on thick skin. What does that mean? On thick skin is everybody's going to tell you no. Every obstacle is going to get in your way when you want something. You're going to fall every day. It's not how many times you fall. It's how many times you get up and how quick you get up. This is choosing and creating it from nothing for yourself as an outcome. Whatever you want is your outcome, is your life. You choose it and you create it. A nine to five is very easy. It's someone else's life. It's their choice. It's their outcome. You're helping them build their dreams or you're building your own dreams and creating a team around yourself to have that become a reality for you. That's cool. I mean, I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing. Can you just make sure that that jack is in the, in the phone? Yep. It's in there? It is. Okay. Well, I can barely hear, but it's cool. We'll, we'll survive with that. So, you said thick skin, and the second one was? Choosing. Choosing to have your outcome no matter what happens in the face of no agreement. W what does that mean? That means along the way to your outcome, whatever you want your life to be, you're going to get a lot of hurdles, a lot of fall downs, a, a lot of things that are going to come in your way that you don't expect that you're not prepared for. And that's, that's life. Everything is going to be thrown at you. And for example, who ever expected the coronavirus to come in and hit us in life? So everything is going to be pulled from your feet. Everything you thought of, there's always going to be obstacles. But when it's your choice and you're choosing in the face of no agreement, I'm going to have this as my outcome, then you have it. Are there things, vehicles, or help that I can get throughout that process? Because if my mindset, or if I'm not tough skin, or I'm working on myself to become tough skin, what can I, who can I get help from? What can I get help from? Mentors, first and foremost. Who, who is somebody you want to be like, or very similar to? And follow them as a structure. And say, okay, I want that as an outcome. They've already achieved that. What did they do? And what didn't they do? And what can I learn from them to reduce my risk or my, my fall downs? So do I go get a mentor at the beginning stages? Or do I wait to learn and go through some challenges and then get a mentor? Or how did you do it? Me, I did it. I chose to first figure out what I really wanted. I went out there and I had a couple of things that I really wanted to be. One, an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a dancer as well, like Madonna, I loved her. So I went out and I said, what really felt good to me? And I started to really feel what it was necessary to get to my outcome. And I said, okay, real estate entrepreneurship is what I want. I worked a nine to five corporate America. I'm from New York City. I have a 22 year of an accounting background and I sat control of a multi-billion dollar real estate conglomerate as well. And I knew at that point, I learned from so many mentors along the way that, you know what, I want this for myself. I had, uh, I was doing some dealings where I was closing buildings in uh, the investors' children's trust funds that I was responsible for and whatnot. I said, okay, I can do this for others, now I can do it for myself. But I learned so much along the way from their mentorships and their fall downs as I walked alongside of them. So nothing comes easy. It never looks like the way you think it's going to look. And it really is a journey. We're so quick to go, oh, I want the outcome. But actually, when you get to what the journey is, that's actually life. Because when you get to the outcome, you're like, okay, now it's, now it's a new race. It's a new something to want. So you're back at square one. It's really the journey. And for mentors, for me, I chose along the way. I would feel and see who I connected with where I was. Because sometimes I thought X person would be the, 
person for me to work with right now when in fact that wasn't the right person for me to work with right now maybe three or four steps ahead but you really connect with people and everything in entrepreneurship or in business is communication so when you're real and you communicate for what you want at this point where you are who you are people show up the right people show up and then you have to be responsible to take that or to leave it and everything comes along with professionalism accountability and ultimately for me it's integrity first and foremost to myself i gave my word to this outcome and to produce this outcome for myself and my life and i'm doing this no matter what and whenever i fell out of integrity i had to clean it up for myself if i don't have integrity my whole team falls i mean i've made commitments in my life and on the way there there have been many many times that i was tempted to break that commitment and that that's not easy thing to go through because logically emotionally it made sense to break the commitment and i'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to face that hopefully it wasn't just me but for some reason i stuck in i still can't figure out why i did that like i'm trying to figure out reverse it where i could communicate it to somebody that why i didn't do that right but how do you keep the how do you keep the promises to yourself when no one is watching and there's no celebration for the wins i don't know well that's where it comes to passion if you're really truly passionate about it in your heart you're going to stick to it and you don't need anybody else it's approval or hurrah or anything for you it's who you are it's who you're becoming as a person and an individual it's your mindset with yourself and it's your word to yourself i want this i choose this no matter what and every time you want to fall every time even if you do fall you get back up and you clean it up and you keep on going and for you it was a passion there was a spark there and i can relate to that i can feel that from you cuz i've been there many a times and a couple of times i slipped and i turned back and i go this feels good right now but it doesn't the pull was always there to go right back oh, i got to clean it up and oh, i got to do this and yeah that's the action that i took i love it how you say clean it up sometimes i wanted to destroy it and just make it take it off of the existence like i wish it wasn't even there to clean up <laughs> <laughs> like can we like skip time and just make sure this is not but the problem with the technology there's always a picture there's always a text message there's always an email trail like you cannot clean it up it's still sometimes it's still there but i i, I understand with you yeah but i've been there before like just i wanted to like be gone and everything else so here's my other question for you during that process what were a couple of elements that kept you from not breaking your promises to yourself. Now I know you said passion but that's like on the emotional side. What did you do for the logical side because logically sometimes things don't go right and you're losing money or losing time and you kind of are convincing yourself that you should let it go but you shouldn't. Mhm. I relate. I've walked that so many times in my life. I'm doing it right now with a deal. You know, I'm like, okay, should I let this deal go? I put so much time, energy, risk in it, and now we've got I said no. It didn't collapse because of me and it's not going to collapse. I'm not going to be the one to have this collapse. If it collapses for some other reason, let's just say, for example, the bank pulled the trigger and said, "No, we're not closing your loan." I can do everything I can to try and get that redone, but if it's out of my control, then you know i've done everything i can so long as it's not because of me one thing that i've done that says no i'm not going to do this how long does it take for individuals to build that kind of mindset because that's not were you like that the first day no so how long does it take and what are some of the what are some of the elements that i could start working on so that could be my end result where i have that kind of mindset so it's an ongoing journey there's no end point it's always growth the more you grow the bigger a challenge you're going to take on because you're going to grow yourself if you buy a single family residence for example in real estate you're going to want to buy a multi family then you're going to want to buy a building and you're going to keep growing so the journey never ends and it's really sitting down with yourself and saying okay what do i want for myself and my life first and foremost 
and that's always going to keep you in the game. One one advice during this crisis to entrepreneurs. Keep going. You say it's so easy like that. It's not like that. I'm, I'm so many people are going to disagree with you. I know. Of course I they are. Of, of course, everybody's going to agree with me because that's the easy way out. The mindset that says everybody else agrees with you. You know, that's why there's the 1% and the 99%. That's why there's leaders and followers. Because the leaders don't stop and don't give in to what everybody else says. They choose. I choose for myself and my life. I choose to keep going. And so when is your course coming out on the mindset? When are we doing that book, that course that you're planning on? When are we doing that? Oh, well, let, let's put it together. Let's schedule it and make it happen. That was such a political answer. It's not political. <laughs> it's, it's about putting it into reality. If you really want to do something, you create it, you put it in, you schedule things and you make it happen. You know, I did I a, 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 a quick video today with uh, some of my team. We're doing some investment properties, talking with investors to invest here in Miami. There's, you know, the, the big real estate investors right now, it's Candyland for them. Everybody else is in fear. Oh, my gosh. And this is Candyland time for investors. It's a mindset. We're going to keep moving on. We're going to keep living. Where do you want your future to be? Same thing you go, for example, uh, let's take a, a, a medical doctor. Okay, coronavirus started. Are you going to not go to med school and study your books? And who do you want to be in this moment because in the time of adversity is when you grow or you step back step forward or step back i agree with that 100 percent. listen thank you so much for being here this morning hopefully we get to do more videos because we just talked on some topics that you could at least elaborate a lot more and get more detail but thank you so much for taking this time stay safe hopefully we'll stay in touch for that course and that book you too my pleasure be well and safe thank you you gotta talk to you soon bye-bye